Good morning, everyone. We are here at Aiken High again to do the Straight to Work panel. For those of you students who are looking for opportunities to jump into the workforce, uh, this is a great panel for you to listen to. We're going to go around and introduce ourselves and tell a little bit about our backgrounds, education, training, how we arrived at our current position. My name is Byron Bush. I am a Director of Business Development with Aiken Personnel Services. I have an accounting background, started at Savannah Riverside, uh, worked with some contracts and some procurement, and then did some operations for small business, and now here I am uh, doing some business development. We'll start here to the left and work our way around, and uh, thank you all for joining in. Right, my name is Shalonda Morris. I am at Universal Plumbing. Um, my original background is in education. I uh, studied at Stoneman College, uh, Harvard Graduate School of Education, and was a teacher, an assistant principal, an assistant professor of practice, and then a full circle back to the family business, which is Universal Plumbing, where I worked in admin, uh, marketing, and education. Uh, my name is Jeff Rice. I'm a training coordinator for the Plumbing System for this local. Uh, we actively recruit uh, students uh, to come into the construction industry and plumbing, pipe fitting, welding. Uh, my background is I graduated in high school in and I thought I wanted to go to the college route. Had a few struggles, found out I was better with articulation, working with my hands and stuff, got into the industry. I uh, worked out in the field for 19 years. I've been over the training department for the last 20 and we actively recruit the students from the high school. My name is Donna Roberts. I am a career coach for the WIOA Youth Program. We are located there at the SC Work Center. People call it the unemployment office, but we, we like to refer to that as a place to find employment. I've been doing this job now for 12 years. I kind of fell into it. I uh, assist young people who have barriers to employment. And the way I fell into this job is I had many barriers. I graduated from high school in 1989. I was not sure exactly um, what I wanted to do as far as a career, but I needed to go to work. I was not one of those uh, young kids that could go to, four, to a four-year college. I needed to go to work. I worked my whole life. And uh, long story short, at 34 years old, I found myself with a college degree, a single parent, uh, almost homeless, unemployed, and I came to WIOA as a participant and ended up becoming a counselor. And I've been doing that now for 12 years, helping young people overcome the same barriers that I overcame so that they can become successful. My name is Dr. Stephen Simmons. I'm the Dean of Technical and Continuing Education at Aiken Technical College. Uh, and never in my wildest dreams would I think I would be in higher education. I, I graduated bottom 10th kid of my class in high school, um, went off to college, studied history, and upon graduation, really did not have any clue what I was going to do for a career. Uh, started my career off uh, in sales, found out that that was a great natural fit for my personality. I was in outside sales uh, for 10 years, uh, and I was hired in 2005 by Aiken Technical College to be the director of sales for the corporate training division. Fell in love with education, higher education, fell in love with the technical uh, and continuing education aspect of, uh, uh, of education and how it ties in with, uh, with work. Um, and then if you hang around long enough in an organization, you get more responsibilities. So I've uh, been the academic dean since 2013, and now I have both the credit academic side as well as the non-credit uh, side. We help people get trained, educated, and go to work. Got it, got it. So, uh, you know, jumping right into it, we're going to talk a little bit about the general hiring process and what type of employees uh, do you generally look for. I'm going to start over here maybe with Shalana and Jeff. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your hiring process and what type of employees are you looking for? Well, typically with us, uh, our, our project, we are a federally regulated apprenticeship program through the Department of Labor. So you have to be 18 years of age or old, you must have a high school diploma or GED and a valid driver's license. So part of our application process is you fill out an application, you interview with a committee, we Look at your transcript for the uh, high schools and the post-secondary you may have, and, and look at the tennis records and everything. Um, you know, in today's industry, the customer's looking for somebody that wants to show up to work every, every day, get their due diligence work, and, and, and be there. So uh, with us, we are post-secondary trainers as well, so we, we have both sides of it. We have the employment side and the training side in, in the evening. So 
our, our, our kids go to school in the evenings while they work for a contract during the day and make a salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our process is you can go online, our website, um, go to So now then, Steve, is there a particular uh, type of, uh, let's say, student or employee that you're looking for, and, and what is the process uh, like to get involved in your organization? Well, <laughs> I have kiddos, I call kiddos, young adults, 16 to 24, who have barriers to employment. Like you guys are, are giving them basic requirements. Well, the young people that I work with don't even have those basic mm -hmm. requirements. And um, we, we focus on, we focus, work with young people who have those barriers. Maybe you're homeless. Maybe you have a, a criminal background. Maybe you do have a drug problem. Maybe you have a problem getting your driver's license. Maybe you're just not sure where you want to go in life. Because, let's just be real, most of the time, a lot of kids who graduate from high school, they, they have no idea. They, they've not had that support system. And we're there to be that support system. It's, we're not just focusing on the person in the career, we kind of focus on the whole person. We work with a lot of uh, agencies who can assist in, in alcohol or drug dependency, um, people who are homeless or someone who's come out of the foster care that you have to work and deal with the whole person. And we work with young adults who have those issues. We have a lot of kids, who, young adults who graduate from high school who are already parented, who are already homeless. Um, so we kind of, those are the young people that we're working with and, and that we're looking for because typically that group gets lost in the mix. They have no direction. So we want to help uh, direct you, guide you. Um, and a lot of times when you graduate from high school, you don't have time to or have the finances to go straight to college. We can help you go straight to work. And while you're working, kind of figure out what your career path is going to be. I've worked with a lot of young people who think they want to go into child care. Well, we put them in a daycare on a work experience, and I get a call a week later, no ma'am, I cannot do this. So, you know, we've saved you a whole lot of time and money in one week deciding, you know, I know I can't do this, I don't want to do this. But we work with those young adults, 16 to 24, who have barriers to employment. Um, the eligibility, it, you know, you come in, you bring your documents. We just need to verify your age. Verify that you have a high school diploma, or if you don't have a high school diploma or GED, we work with you on that as well. Um, we just need to verify that you, you're ready to work, and you're willing to work with us, and we're willing to work with you. So a couple uh, points now. For, for Aiken Technical College, we're an open access to open door institution, which means we're going to take everybody and anybody, um, and that's a great a great place and position for us to be. We're going to have some individuals that have tremendous barriers. Um, when we work with them to identify the right program for them to move into. Um, but we also have students um, who want to just pursue a two-year associate's degree, either to transfer or gain a certification to go to work. Uh, when we're looking with uh, employers, the thing that both of you guys said uh, was so critical, I need someone to show up on time, uh, be a self-starter, critical thinker, be able to pass a drug test, and you know, if they do have a background uh, issue, we're able to work with you know, WIOA and or some of the employers that say, yeah, we can give this individual a second chance. Um, 
And we've got several short-term programs. One is our South Carolina Manufacturing Certified Program. This is a 160-hour clock hour um, non-credit program. They're going to gain various certifications of forklift, OSHA 10, CPR, uh, MSSC, Certified Production Technician. And that's great, but the real um, value of that program is the education. But when we do our graduation, we then afterwards walk them over to a classroom kind of like this, where we've got multiple employers that are looking to, uh, to hire them. And APS has been one of our partners uh, in hiring. And what's interesting for me is although the education is valuable, the fact that that student showed up every single night for 160 hours, that's really what impresses the uh, HR directors uh, who want to give these individuals a chance. Um, but we have other programs. Uh, you mentioned about weeding out for child care. We've got uh, a tower installation program. It's 12 days, and they're going to teach you how to teach you how to climb up to 400 feet on a cell tower. So we've got a 20 foot tower that usually <laughs> will weed anybody out. Um, it would weed me out, um, as well as blood weeds me out from any medical profession. So it's definitely knowing who you are before you go down a pathway. But um, but we do. We we're very in tune uh, with the employers and with the population, and we're trying to serve as that middle piece with the education and identifying the individuals for the right fit to move into those careers. So you can go from the associate's degree all the way to a 12-day. You're climbing cell towers, and you will have a job uh, upon completion of that 12-day uh, program. Got it. Got it. So, so I hear a few things. A, a valid driver's license will help you. A, a, a clean background as much as you can. Uh, Attendance, attendance, attendance will help you. And then, uh, you know, don't worry, because uh, who do you know uh, who's never made a mistake? I don't know anybody who's never made a mistake. So if you have made some mistakes, it's not over for you. There's other opportunities for you to, uh, you know, make, make right some of those wrongs and keep moving forward. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to throw a general question out there and, and see who wants to take a stab at it. And it's, it's kind of going towards a resume. Uh, uh, what constitutes a good resume, and then what are the characteristics or traits that you're looking for in candidates? And uh, you know, is, is there one over the other? Is it skills and education over work ethic or, or, or character, or what are you looking for, and, and what constitutes a good resume uh, to show that? I look at resumes all the, all the time. I'm a filter person, and so. Uh, that you focus on when considering a, a candidate and, and, and whether you take skills and education over work ethic or, or character is it a mix of both? So for me, and this ranks true for both of my lives, you know, as an educator now where I am in, in the plumbing industry, will over skill every time because if I have an incredibly skilled technician who doesn't follow directions and blows up a building, you know, by, by hitting something they shouldn't hit because they can't, they did not follow the directions, that's not very helpful or very safe for anyone. If I have someone who has some, some basic skills, has the will to do it, really wants to try, um, and can follow directions and learn over time, that person is going to be an, an asset to us um, every time. So the will over skill. Anybody else want to? Well, I just want to add, you know, young adults just coming out of high school, you're not going to have a loaded resume. Mm -hmm. We understand that. And a lot of the with work experience, when I'm talking to, to my participants, we want to build your resume. 
and you're not going to have a long list of uh, work experience. So we do want to focus on your character and your qualifications, maybe something positive that a teacher said about you, those kinds of things. And the, the, resume, the way we did our resumes back in the day is not how we do them today. So the resume is going to market you and going to get you the interview. You don't want to knock yourself out of the interview by a sorry resume. And uh, I look at a lot of resumes for young adults coming straight out of high school or even college. And the one thing is keep it short, one page. We don't need to read a biography <laughs> on your resume. And those are the kinds of things I've been working with. And understand that you're not going to come out of high school with a fully loaded resume, and that's okay. And I would agree, uh, you know, with your resume, you just want to make sure that it's, it's, it's formatted, uh, easy to follow and read, and, and to put those important skills in a way that we can look at it and find it. Uh, and, and just kind of ping-ponging on some things that were said, because I was one of those people I did not know what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I wanted to play football. And uh, the only reason I went into accounting was because my brothers did and they were successful. So, you know, it's one of those things, if you don't know what you want to do, think about some of the things that you're good at, what you like to do, what you feel good doing, what you're curious about. Um, there are things uh, such as strength finders uh, that you can go find out what your top strengths are and uh, pursue opportunities in, in, in those realms. Um, another real quick thing uh, as far as uh, skills and character, some of the first questions we ask in an interview have nothing to do with, per se, your skills more than your character. So tell me five words to describe yourself, or what are three goals that you have for this year, to really get to know the person uh, before you go into hiring them. So thank you. Uh, so uh, I'll go to Jeff, uh, and you know we'll, we'll bounce our way around. Uh, what are some of the benefits of working a career in your industry or enrolling in your program? So, as I said before, we are a post-secondary education facility. We partner with several what we call signatory contractors and hire our students to work in the different industries. Uh, we have employment, other site, plant bowl, all the chemical plants in the CSRA at home. So, a typical day for them would be they would go work for a contractor during the day, uh, or a 14 shift, maybe a 5 8 shift in the evening they come to our school for secondary. Uh, we offer full retirement, um, health insurance benefits. Uh, we do offer college credits for completion of a apprenticeship program. Our students get 45 hour paid for um, credits towards the social security construction benefit supervision. So, you know, it's not just about coming and turning tools and using wrenches. Some of our uh, apprentices become our contractors later on in life, so they can expand out that field. It's, it's a career. Um, as I say, I've been there 40 years, and in two years I'll be retiring with, with some pensions. So it's just it's just a great great benefit. You, you got all kinds of different opportunities in the different industries out here. Uh, we do articulation for they can take, where they've got to train people. They get direct entry into our program rather than going through the application process. So once they uh, get certified through AQ Tech, they come to us. Uh, we place them in the program directly. They start out at a higher rate of pay and, and everything. They have less, less time to complete with us. Ours is a five-year apprenticeship program. Got it. Got it. Anybody else want to share some of the benefits uh, of a career in your industry or enrolling in your program? I know we spoke to it, but. I, I wanted to add when you were talking about the Tower mm -hmm. program, um, because we do partner with AQ Tech. We partner with other technical colleges. We fund. We don't provide the training. I tell my participants all the time, you don't want me to train you in anything. <laughs> but we provide the money for the training. We provide the funding. And we have assisted young adults in doing the tower training. And they are very successful. But part of our uh, coaching is understanding if you go into a job in welding, or if you go into a job in tower, or driving a truck, be prepared to move around. And the way that you live your life now does affect those those careers that you decide to go into because you cannot, um, we're not going to pay for a truck driver training if you have a lot of things on the background. We can't send you to 
healthcare training if you have a lot of issues on your background, but what we can do, you know, we're just not going to leave you out there dead in the water. We can assist you in getting those things cleared up on your background. So that's, that's a major benefit to our program. We have access to funds that can help you clear your background, then get you the training that you need, as if all of that stuff never happened. And we've done that with um, several of uh, the, the tower people. I get calls from them. I'm hanging up a up here, <laughs> making like 18, 20 bucks an hour, and you know, so then we have to talk about money management because that's when you get a 1099 at the end of the year. How are you saving your money so that you can pay your taxes? So that's our part of our program is we treat the whole person. We want to help you become successful because truly, you know, I'm like your mama. <laughs> when you succeed, I succeed. When you fail, I'm like, oh no, what did I do wrong? So that's really a part of our program is helping the whole person and become helping you to ensure that you're successful because when you're successful, you know, you carry that trait down to the next generation. That's right. So it's almost like uh, uh, when you're at your best, everything around you right. is better. And I always say in order to develop professionally, one must develop personally. So what are those right. things that you're doing to develop yourself personally? Uh, what are the skills, are there any particular skill sets that any of you are looking for uh, for an individual to come into your industry or program, and are there any deal breakers? So like, you know, is there a specific skill, if you're great in this, come to our industry, and is there anything that is like, this is a deal breaker for us? I'll throw it out there to start. Um, I know that we, we're heavily in training skills, but we also know that soft skills are critical. Um, so through the nine credit division, we do teach soft skills of uh, the leadership in terms of personal development, you know, conflict resolution, you know, how do you present yourself in a work environment, and all that's all key. We try and help the students as best we can within the classroom to develop those good skills. So I think of our welding students, you know, you got to be on time, you got to be safe, you got to think about yourself. And if they're not doing those things, we're going, our instructor is going to step in and share that with them. Uh, we have a student who uh, came the first two weeks, disappears on us, comes back four weeks later, we're going to talk to him about that. Um, I had one student years ago when I was teaching a business class, I actually plagiarized, um, and the, the life lesson for that student was to suffer the penalty of receiving an F in that class and getting kicked out of that class, um, because if he does that in the workplace, where let's say he steals from you know, petty you know, cash or whatnot, um, that's going to have major uh, major issues than me just giving him an F or him earning an F. So, uh, as we're teaching skills, we're also trying to infuse some of these lessons. Um, and then we're also trying to work with students to make sure they have a right fit. We've got a lot of students that enter into our computer programming and networking because they love playing video games. And that's great, but loving playing video games and learning how to program or be a networker are two different things. Uh, and so we really, you know, same thing with, with nursing or, or any of our programs. You may start one way, but then realize this isn't for me, and that's okay. Um, looking at the resume uh, discussion we were uh, just having, we always tell students there's three elements uh, of your career that you're building upon that should be reflected on your resume. One are your formal, your formal education, high school, associate's degree, bachelor's, master's, where is that taking you in? The other uh, leg is your experience, and all experience and any experience is good. I waited tables in college. That was one of the best uh, experiences I've ever had as far as learning how to work and deal with people. But you're constantly building on your experience. Uh, and then the third uh, realm is, is students may not be aware of are industry recognized certifications, earning certifications in welding or earning the certifications. They're not necessarily, uh, well, they're not degrees, but what they are, industry certifications like A plus and that plus security plus you'll hear for computers. And that has values for employers. And so I always tell students that, you know, think about your lifestyle. What, what lifestyle do you want to live? Do you want to live in a big city? You want to live in a small town, you want to get married, you want to have kids. That vision of your life for the next three to five years, then you have to ask yourself, well, what do I want to do to be able to be that person I want to be in three to five years? And what type of education do I need? What type of experience do I need to gain? What type of certifications do I need to be able to prepare myself? And you're always going to be doing that throughout your life. And so it's a, it's a holistic approach, uh, as you were saying, um, to building your career and building your life and not necessarily you know, I graduate, I go to school, I get a job. Um, it's it's a, little, a little bit more complicated in today's world than maybe in years past. Well, yeah, no, I, I think that you said a lot there. Uh, you know, what I heard, 
One is, uh, you know, purpose. You know, a lot of, lot of times, uh, how Nelson Mandela said it is, action without vision is passing time away. Vision without action is daydream. But vision with action can change the world. So if you find out what your purpose is or what do you, what do you want to do, and if you don't, you at least can pursue it. I, I almost think uh, success, half of it is just showing up and trying. Um, when you talk about that experience, you gain experience. When someone needs your help on Saturday morning and you're not doing anything else, show up. Uh, that's how I became a DJ. Uh, someone needed some help and I just showed up and I tried. And, and you know, one thing DJ had taught me was uh, how to control your vibe and then it helps control the outer vibe. So uh, thank you for that very much. And uh, the other thing I heard is communication. Being able to communicate uh, having soft skills, having uh, a desired result, even in, in my opinion, helps you to communicate uh, better and, and showing up on time. Show up, show up, show up. Uh, so thank y'all for that. So how much guidance or assistance is made available to individuals uh, in developing their career goals? Is there, is there guidance uh, within your departments or organizations to help those students develop once they do get into the workplace to continue to grow professionally? I, I can speak to that. I'm sitting on my hands because I'm trying to control myself. Oh, yeah, so I, just out. show up. Yeah. You know, that's a big deal. And talking about soft skills, you can, you can be smart and have all the degrees, but if your attitude sucks, you know, I don't know if that's a good word to use, but, I, you know, I'm using that word, but... You know, if your attitude is no good, the skills, your skills are not going to get you anywhere. Nobody wants to work for the Krabby Patty, no matter how smart you are or how intelligent you are. And so we focus on soft skills and being able to communicate and get along with people in your workspace because you may not agree, but we learn to show each other grace and respect. That goes a long way in the workplace, it still does. It may sound a little old school, but it does, just to show each other respect. And a deal breaker for me working with young adults coming out of high school, I understand you have issues, um, but show up and follow up and be willing to be uh, teachable and take correction. Because um, what I find working with young people, what works on the street doesn't necessarily work in the workplace. Maybe you can go to Walmart in your SpongeBob pajamas and your curls, but don't come showing up looking for a job that way because, you know, someone may smile at you and think, you know, make you think it's okay and it's not okay. So be willing to, to be teachable and show up and answer the phone and follow up when you do go to a job interview. Follow up with the person who interviewed you. It's very important um, to have those soft skills. And speaking on the guidance part, um, I pick with my participants a lot about, hey, um, I'll help you, but I'm not going to hold your hand and babysit you. But 95% of the time, I end up babysitting and holding hands. <laughs> it really all depends on how much you want, how far you want to go, how far you want to go in your vision, and uh, not just sitting around wanting and wishing and actually going for it. As long as you're willing to go for it, I will go with you. I'll hold your hand as far as you need to go. But as soon as you drop the ball, I'm waiting on you. So that, that's, that's as far as we go with the guidance. We'll go as far as you're willing to let us go with you. That's right. And establishing those values. What are your personal values? What's important to you? And that's going to be important when trying to pick a job or a career or a company to go work for. You want to make sure those company values align with your values. Uh, I always say in, 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 in my business is uh, two things. It's the understanding that it takes more than me to make more than me. Because one plus one is two anywhere. If I want to progress, I have to be exposed to different people, different environments. And the last thing is just mutual respect. Two people with mutual respect can do anything. Um, could someone tell me, I guess, from cradle to grave process, what would a student expect? How long does it take? Uh, where do I start uh, from? you know, where they are watching this video to applying uh, with your organization to then being enrolled or, or starting a job. Uh, what does that process look like? How long does it take? You know, what should we expect from the moment I sign up or applying or putting in an application to 
being accepted or hired. Uh, could we talk about that process? I can speak to it with us. <clears throat> a young, young person coming out of the school system, the, the high school system, they put an application, they get accepted to the program, they're going to start an apprenticeship program where they're going to work for a contractor during the day, they're going to work side by side with mentors on that job every day, 40 hours a week, teaching the, the skill set on the job site. They're going to come to classes at night, learn the, the technical part of it so they can apply the technical part to the job site when they get out there working with the journey. Uh, they'll do that for five years at that point. During that point, they'll, they'll uh, accrue some certification and accreditation through welding, biotech, uh, instrumentation and stuff. At the end of the five years, they have the assessment test they take to get their journal card. At that point, they become a journal. Um, they should be trained and qualified to work in any industry in the country, going around to any type of facility. Uh, and then, as a journal, if you sell a job on that, you, you typically move up as a foreman, general foreman, and possibly supervisor. And then some of our guys, like I said earlier, branch out to be contractors and actually run the work and appoint people themselves. So we've got a lot of, a lot of students that come through, gone through the apprenticeship program, worked out in the field for 15, 20 years, opened up their own businesses, and been successful in the capital businesses all over CSR. Anybody else? How does that, how's the application process to hire process? About how long does that take? Application to hiring process for us is very, is very quick turnaround um, if they have experience. Um, if they have experience, um, you know, we can gather from their work experience, their references, and um, the, the two interviews that we'll have, um, we would go ahead and get them on a truck with someone so we can get a gauge of what they can do. Um, and what they can't do, and then there's usually a probationary period of about 90 days because it takes that long with us or about 75% residential, so there's, you know, a ton of things that they could be doing. It takes a while to really see what people are good at and what they want to struggle in and if, if, um, what they can do lines up with what they said they could do. Um, so after that, we can go, uh, be able to make a full hire. Um, for someone who is new coming into it, um, they could still get a job doing, you know, different things. You know, there's warehouse, there is, you know, some but that road to becoming an actual plumber is, I'm glad you said it, it's, it's, it's about five years long, you have to have patience. And sometimes the, the younger guys um, may struggle with the patience to wait that long because obviously with the certification comes more money, um, more money, more independence and things like that. So immediately getting a job, it could be quicker. Um, becoming a technician, if, you know, that's, with a journeyman license, with your own job, where, where would I start? Let's, let's just say plumbing is interesting to me. Um, I'm curious about it. I don't know anything about it, uh, but I'm interested. Where, where do I start? So what I found is um, that there's a big gap right now between the, so the people who are about to retire um, are at you know about age 60, 70. Then there's a, a huge gap. And we have a couple of guys who are in their 20s and 30s. Each and every one of those guys learn from a father, an uncle, stepdad, a good friend. You really have to, as you said, um, hop on a, a, you know, a job with someone, try stuff at home, um, try stuff with other people, and just you, you have to get experience. And it's a catch-22 because you need experience to be a plumber. But you know, how do you get that experience? You know, because you can't come and you know, I'm here experience on the truck. A new training program that we're that we're right. that we're identifying. Right. And that's super exciting, you know, yeah. to be able to do that. But but really learning from someone um, that you can just a mentor or someone that would allow you to, to work on some things and teach you some things so you can get some hands on experience first get a basic concept sure. and then be able to so, you know, even for students, I hope that they hear that the, the amount of opportunity, if you look at the gap between everyone exiting that workforce and the opportunity for you to come up and progress, uh, there's other industries, roofing is another industry, uh, technicians for cars, HVAC, um, there's several opportunities for you to go and grab some skills and enter into the workforce. 
Uh, and I always say it should be something more than the money. Everybody's got to make the money. But why? To maintain and improve your quality of life, to take care of your family, to go on some vacations, to enjoy life. So just make sure it's more than just the money. We need the money, but to do what? Uh, you, and Steve, could you talk to us, uh, even in enrolling uh, into a and Tech, um, what does that look like? How long does that take? Um, how do we start there? So I'm going to speak to students who are seniors in high school that are looking to come on board uh, with us in the fall. Um, I would recommend starting now. Uh, you can go apply online. It doesn't cost anything to apply online. Once your application is received, you'll then meet with a um, uh, enrollment specialist counselor. We'll take you through getting the FAFSA complete, um, taking uh, the uh, entry exams, um, and also getting you ready to be prepared uh, for your first semester. They'll also do a little bit of career counseling. What are you interested in doing? What do you, you know, want to do? And so I kind of go back to recommending to the students, um, go uh, tour our website. Begin to think of which lifestyle you want to have, what you want to do, what you've heard people um, say are good careers, and you begin to look at our, career, our uh, programs that are out there. Um, so once you're gone through the uh, enrollment period and you're enrolled for the first semester, it takes, if you pursue um, your education uh, on a full-time basis, you know, you take four to five courses, it'll take you two years to complete most of our associate degrees. But you also may be a student who wants to go part-time and work part-time, and that's fine as well. I recommend taking at least two classes a semester to continue to progress. Um, but we've got student success centers that are there to help students continue on. Uh, and once you complete the program and graduate um, in about two years, then we're going to you know, be helping you uh, identify a career, and then we're going to be following up with you to see how that career is going. Um, so it can be a two-year process. Uh, it can be a little longer, depending on if you're working uh, as well, and, and depending on what program. It might take a little longer in nursing or industrial maintenance or welding uh, than, let's say, the completed business degree or the uh, network technician degree. Got it. Uh, do, do any of your organizations uh, providing seminars, workshops, training uh, for employees to keep keep up their skills or acquire new ones? Sir? Yeah, I'll jump in on that. Um, so, you know, ongoing professional development after you've been hired. Um, you, you were talking a little bit about that for personal development. One of the books I want to recommend that my mother, you know, in a desperate attempt to figure out what I was going to do with myself, gave me a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I picked it up, I can't remember how many years later, and I read it. And I read it at the right time in life, and it absolutely revolutionized the way in which I approached the world. So it's, a, it's an older book written by Dr. Stephen Covey, but you can find it in most thrift stores and in used bookstores and still in print. But it is absolutely um, uh, fantastic. And now I forgot your question. <laughs> uh, what was your question again? Uh, uh, do, do, does your organization provide any seminars, workshops, training, yeah. uh, you know, continuous improvement? Right. So with our non-credit division, we actually go to work uh, with companies, um, you know, uh, either you know, uh, any company, um, and we identify needs for their workforce for professional development. A lot of it does uh, move around the world of soft skills, leadership skills, conflict resolution, team building, um, and so we provide that with uh, companies who want to train their existing employees. Uh, we also provide uh, those seminars and some of those courses to students. Uh, we have a College 103 class that's offered for students to learn how to be a college student, and I would highly recommend it uh, to students that are starting out with us. Um, but yeah, we've got the non-credit division that helps existing employees. Uh, we also have programs um, uh, within the uh, academic program, but I also highly recommend students create their own program. Uh, this goes beyond just the self-help book, but there's books, there's videos, there's everything on the internet where you can create your own professional development plan that prepares you to be a professional in your career. So uh, we're, we're, we're coming down here. Uh, let me ask this. Uh, what is one of the most important skills? Like, if you had said this one skill is what I look for for any person in my organization, and then tell me what do you like most about your organization or company? So it's kind of a twofold. I guess we'll work our way around here. If you just tell me the one skill you want all of your employees to, to have or skill character trait, and then the one thing that you like most about your job. Yeah, I think um, communication. Well, 
most about your job. Okay. So my particular job, not the industry. Well, I will also talk about the industry just very quickly. One thing about the industry, the trades, um, robots can't do them right now. Your jobs are safe, and there are more jobs available than there are people to do them. So you will have job security. So that's important about the, the industry. One thing I like about my job is that um, I spend a lot of time um, introducing uh, young people to opportunities in trades. And um, though I grew up in the trades and I took a different route, I ended up coming back to it. And so I see both sides of um, you know, academia, sometimes include student loans that follow you for the rest of your life, and like what are some other options for people who could take another route. So that's one of the favorite parts of my job is being able to expose students to opportunities and give them a chance to, to try it and see what they like or even think about something they never thought about before that would really set them up for success in their life. Most important skill and favorite thing you like. And she hit on it is communication and attendance. You know, our contractors, they say, I, I can't work with somebody that's not, not work every day and, and go over their process and what they need to do. So it's, it's, it's huge for them to have communication skills and to be at work every day. Uh, the thing I like about uh, my job is we get the opportunity for people to improve their quality of life through a career situation working in, in the industry. Um, and it is truly a career, it's not just a job. It, it's the way you're going to, uh, Put a house on your kid's head, you know, like you say, enjoy vacations, be able to afford to send them to college on down the line. So we just enjoy giving people a chance to, to improve their quality of life. Sounds good. Sounds good. I want to add to that as well about the most important skill is communication and being teachable and personable. Maybe you cannot communicate as well verbally, but how well do you communicate in other ways and how can you present yourself? being in that way that you can communicate. So it's very important that you um, are personable and being teachable mm -hmm. and being present, mm -hmm. not just physically, but mm -hmm. mentally, because we have a lot of things going on in our lives. And for me as a single mother coming to work, it's a lot of times difficult for me, and, and I've been in the workforce a long time, but being present mentally and uh, emotionally and being able to give my 100% to my job because they are who is paying me. And the other, the other thing is understanding the difference between your career and your calling. I'm called to help people, to mentor people. My career, what I do, is my platform for that calling. So being a mentor and being an advocate for someone who comes into our program who has no idea what they want to do in their life, what are you called to do? What do you, what do you feel led to do? What do you enjoy? So now let's find a training and a career that's going to give you a platform for that calling so that you you can enjoy your life. Because it is, you know, we need money to survive, but it's not just about money. It's about enjoying your life. You know, I work so I can enjoy McDonald's a couple times a week. Enjoy going and taking my job to Disney World. Enjoy taking my family places and just enjoy life. That's why I work. That's why I want to get paid, but I want to enjoy what I do while I get paid. So just being able to communicate and uh, to be teachable. And like she was saying earlier about the plumbing and the welding industry, um, for me as a career coach, I am a liaison between the person coming in the door and her and him. They don't know what's out there. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But when you come in and you sit across the table from me, Miss Donna, this is what I want to do. This is what I feel like I'm called to do. How, how can I get into this? Well, maybe I don't know either, but we can find out together. And I'm learning and you're learning and together we can help you, you know, help you get to where you need to be. So is that what you like most about your job is, is helping? Is seeing the light bulb come on because for me, my the light bulb came on for me really late in life. I'm a bit of a late bloomer, and I see it coming on a little brighter the older that I get. But um, yeah, it's just seeing the light bulb come on and people going, wow, I can really do this. The aha moment. The aha uh -huh. moment. Sometimes uh -huh. it's just getting your diploma, mm -hmm. getting past uh, those barriers, because you've been told your whole life you've never do anything, you never go anywhere, you're going to work at McDonald's or Walmart or Arby's. Those are fine jobs. But you don't want to be there in 20 or 30 years, you want to keep growing. And when people get past that, 
you realize that I do have a talent. Mm -hmm. I do have something to offer. I can contribute to society and seeing that um, they're getting paid for something that they have worked with with their own hands and their own minds, something that they produced. It, it's amazing to see that. I like to see it. I just got it. Is there a most important skill that what do you like most about Bob's work? Yeah, so I was, I'm not sure if it's a skill, but it's a, it's a positive attitude. And mm -hmm. showing up to work saying, I can, yes, I can, and I'll do this. And we have a, a running joke that's not really that much of a joke that it can take because it's success is punished. Mm -hmm. If you're a confident person and you're a can do attitude, unfortunately, you might get loaded with more and more, uh, more and more duties. But getting loaded with more and more duties expands your ability, expands your, your knowledge and skills base. And, um, you can be the most highly skilled, highly educated human being, but if you can't get along with others and you're an absolute uh, pain to have in the workplace, when it's time to make tough decisions, they become really easy decisions. Um, but if you are uh, one who has a positive attitude contributes to that workplace, uh, the company's going to move mountains to make sure you stay in their, uh, in their world. And so that's, that's a big piece. What I love most about working for a technical college um, is, uh, is service, as you mentioned. But I love the fact that we're helping citizens uh, identify and have for gain skills and knowledge abilities so they can then find careers um, that allow them to take care of their families. I'm very fortunate and blessed to be able to have taken care of, you know, having a wife and having four small kids that are getting older, but being able to take care of them um, is important. I feel very blessed with that, and I want other people to have that same experience. Um, one of my favorite memories was um, being in Kroger, and, and I, I can never wear pajama bottoms and go uh, out. You know, people will, will, can recognize me. Um, so, uh, so I do say, you know, make sure you, wherever you go, you dress, you dress well. Um, but I was in Kroger, you know, focused on getting whatever, you know, my wife had texted me I'm supposed to get, this guy comes running up to me. And, uh, and I recognized him after he said hello. He says, I want to thank you so much. And he introduced me to his kids. This was a guy who lost his job in the early, early 40s, didn't know what to do, came through one of our manufacturing 10-week programs, got a job with a local manufacturing firm, then went to uh, another firm about a year later. That firm closed down, then he got picked up at the Starbucks plant over in Augusta, Georgia, which is one of the best smelling plants I've ever walked through. Um, but this guy was able to take care of his family and kids, and it all started with that certification program. But he also had the attitude and the desire. And I thought, you know, I, I hope there's others out there, I know there's others out there who've come through a technical college who have that same experience. And so that's really, that's a life worth living, being a part of that institution uh, and helping individuals find work and helping companies find employees as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I would, you know, uh, say here for me, the most important uh, character trait would be mutual respect is respect. Um, you know, two people with respect can do anything. Uh, I'm always passionate about leadership and say, what is leadership? Leadership is influence. And we all influence the environment with our presence. So if you are here, you're influencing. It's whether you want to be a progressive uh, influence or a non-progressive. And there's two ways to influence this by reason or force. We want to be people of reason so we can stay safe and continue to progress. Uh, so in closing, uh, I would like to go around and uh, ask everyone, just kind of for a direct statement, uh, in a, in a, in a two-way perspective. We want to talk to the students, and we want to talk to the parents. So uh, what is the bottom line for the students? Um, whatever you want to say to them directly from your heart, words of encouragement, preparing them for the workforce, as well as for the parents, uh, what is that message? Um, and, and we'll go around one more time, and, and then maybe I'll bring us to a close. But really, for uh, straight to work, for the students, and for the parents, what's the bottom line? What do you want them to take away from this? Yeah. Um, I, I think I, one thing I would want uh, the students to do is just try new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. You won't know what you like or what you're good at until you try it. Um, and definitely don't be afraid to fail, because some of the best lessons that I've had all came from falling down in, in, in some way. And for the parents, I'd say um, many of us live vicariously through our children, but your children's path may not be the same path that you have. And so uh, let them try new things and don't be afraid to let them fail so that they can uh, learn from those experiences. Uh, mine would be with the, with the high school students coming out, you know. A lot of you don't know what you want to do, and, and 
typical four-year college degree is not something you think is set up for you. The, the, the apprenticeship program is the way to go. It's a post-secondary. It is, is, it is uh, education past high school, but you're working during the day while you're learning at night. So it's not a typical classroom setting where you're going in there and just in books, books, books. There's a lot of hands-on concept out there in the field and everything. So, you know, it just gives you a different aspect. That, that's where I wound up. Uh, I like to work with my hands, and I enjoy it more once I got the apprenticeship program uh, and, and been doing it for 40 years. As far as the parents, you know, I know we all like our kids to go to college, but uh, construction is, is not a bad job to have. I mean, you know, we're at Savannah Riverside, we're at Plant Bowl, we're at all the plants, we're working side by side with everybody doing them, uh, uh, keeping the plants maintenance and everything. Uh, Money-wise, it's really good. I mean, we, we did well about the bowl last year, make well in excess of over $150,000 out there uh, putting the project together. So, and it is a career, it's not just a job, um, it's, it's long term and, and, and you'll be able to um, retire from it and be able to supply for your family the whole time. I would just encourage the high school students, those who are just graduating, uh, as soon as you graduate, you don't have a specific plan, you're not really sure what you're going to do, don't panic. Um, Come down to the center, the SC Work Center, the unemployment office, or go to the website, see what's available, see what services we have. Come to the center, um, when you're looking for a job or you're just trying to figure out what to do with your, your life, it's not going to come to you. You're going to have to go out and find it. Get into those areas where those um, opportunities are available to you, and that is at the SC Work Center. You come in there, ask to speak to someone about WIOA. We can help you. We can put you on a path, kind of talk to you about what's available, uh, let you know what resources are out there, and understanding that you don't have to go, four year colleges are good, you know, if you kind of know what you want to go into, but you don't have to do that. There are, trade, there are trades out there that make the world go around. We need auto mechanics, we need welders, we need plumbers. Every day I'm telling my son, boy, you need to have pieces of toilet. <laughs> so, you know, we need plumbers, we need welders, we need mechanics, we need aviators, we need tower installers. Those are the things that make the world work. And um, we can help you get on those career paths. So come to the center. We can get you on a work experience. We pay you $9.25 an hour. Um, you can work up to 240 hours. And then when you're done with that work experience, that employer can hire you. Or at the least, you have some work experience and you have something to, to build and add to your resume. So we're there to help you do that. All right. So the students, uh, I would say, begin to really think about what is it that you want to do uh, for your life, lifestyle, and how does your career fit in with that. Um, begin to do a lot of research on the internet, um, different types of careers that are out there. Uh, come then and explore via our website what type of programs we have. Um, I would definitely encourage you to apply to any technical college, uh, as well as begin to talk with counselors about what opportunities are there, what career fields we have, and what programs to study. Um, to the parents, and as a father of four kids, don't worry about the money. Uh, and I smile saying that we have plenty of scholarships, we've got plenty of resources um, from multiple different sources. Some of our programs have full scholarships, um, and we have uh, programs that pay as a last dollar scholar. But we're also extremely affordable as it is. Uh, and I've got my second oldest son is a student uh, at Aiken Technical College, and I'm thrilled to death that his life scholarship pays 100%. Uh, for it, um, and um, it, it's really, it's a good positive thing. But definitely, don't let the barriers prevent you from even exploring and trying. Uh, there are opportunities, and there is a way uh, to make it happen. I'll, I'll throw in there something for the students and parents. Students, you are talented. Uh, any person of average intelligence can do anything he or she wants to do. So that means if you can read and write and understand what I'm saying, you can do anything you want to do. Go gain some skills. Identify your strengths. It's okay to be uncomfortable. And who do you know that's perfect? There's no way to do it perfect. Find an intent, find a desired result, find why you want to do it. Parents, I'm not a parent, don't have any kids, so I can't offer any advice. They always told me unasked for advice is unwelcome advice. But encourage your students, encourage your children. Um, you know, of course, parents want the best uh, for their kids, but a lot of times, sometimes it's why do you do this? Come down, you know. Yeah, you, we can we can feel the rod, but also give them those words of affirmation that they can do it. 
that they are talented and, and just support and try to understand their dreams. And uh, children, listen to your parents because they want, they got your best interest in mind. Uh, is there anything else, any other uh, closing remarks that anybody would like to say or, or give? I, I would like to address the parents. Yes, I work with a lot of young adults who do not have that support system. So it's very important that if you have an opportunity to help your student or your child get to an appointment, get to that appointment so that they can, they can help you and you can help them. I just encourage you to be that support system. And sometimes it's just an encouraging word. Sometimes it's, uh, you may have to do what you did in high school, set the alarm and make them get up. Tell them to get up, take a shower, <laughs> go to that appointment. Uh, it's very important because I do work with young adults who don't have that support system. And sometimes that's just all they need is someone saying, get up, you can do this. Cold water always works for me. Mm -hmm. my, my dad told me once that the cold water gets you straight up. Uh, <laughs> any, anybody else? I, I just want to thank the county school systems of to reach out to the students and the parents and let them know well there are other alternatives out there and you know you have an industry here to, to help support that and all and we just appreciate the opportunity to get in front of that. Sounds good. Well uh, in close I'm, I'm going to close with a poem uh, by Edgar Albert Guest. Uh, it's one of my favorites called It Couldn't Be Done. Somebody said that it couldn't be done but he would have chuckled and replied that maybe it couldn't but he would be the one who wouldn't say so until he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin. On his face, if he were, he hid. He started to sing as he tackled that thing that couldn't be done, and he did. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat, and he took off his hat, and the first thing we knew, he'd be gunning. With a lift of the chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quitting, he started to sing as he tackled that thing that couldn't be done, and he did. There are thousands to tell you that it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy fail you. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle on in with a bit of a grin. Take off your coat and go to it. And start to sing as you tackle that thing that cannot be done, and you'll do it. Y'all can do anything. Good luck. Thank y'all for watching.